welcome all my fellow gangsters and geeks, Amp Capo, Black Adonis Games. Today, man, we're going to be working on removing event ticks. What I did was I saved an older copy of my project when I still had the event tick. And let's go look at this whopping amount of abuse that I was doing here. Um, this is a demonstration of, and, and, and I wasn't gonna leave it like this for the game. I was testing, but it just got to the point of where, look, we better start taking care of this before it gets out of hand. And then you're not gonna be seeing the proper frame rates. You're not gonna be seeing a lot of things. You're not gonna know if things are working the right way that they should, because you got them sequencing out instead of just doing what they're supposed to do. And yes, in the game, it looked okay. But I got a lot more frames back. I got about 20 frames by just removing this. And like I said, these two can be abused easily if you don't get into the habit of making events, which now I have figured out that making the event is just as fast as doing all this nonsense. So, um, and I'm not going to say nonsense because this is awesome for testing. If you just need to do like a couple, like maybe two or three off of this sequence or something, sequences do have their times when they're very, very, very nice to use, but not behind this tick like this. So this is basically going off and there's so many events here. You can see I moved stuff over cause I was trying to rearrange here, but this is just doing a whole bunch of events and that's what these are. That's what you got to get used to that. When you fire this off, a tick, a tick is firing off every frame. As it says there, it's calling it every frame if tick is enabled. To show you what that means here in your character, it says start. If true, this function will start enabled, but can be disabled later on. It says start with tick, ta da, enabled. So there we go, start with tick enabled is checked. So that means that all of this stuff when my character starts and the event begins play, this tick starts as well. And this is doing uh, some waves for water movement when I'm in the water. And then I got like my, uh, some movement component. That's not on there. That's, that's separated already doing its own thing, which is nice. But then I had these things going off of ticks, all these field of view modifiers, all these things going off of ticks. And then I even had stuff way over here, man. Let's go way across the seven seas over here. And I had uh, one firing off up here to show in high stats. Um, I just had them everywhere, man. Okay. So I had them everywhere. Um, showed right here. This is where the tick started before I moved it way down there to do like 9,000 other jobs. So it was here as well. So it's just, just doing way too much guys. You can just see it's a tangled web. Now let's go to the other blueprint. This is the current one, current version. And what I want to do is get back to where the tick was. So you can kind of maintain your focus by using this node here to enable game pass support. Cause that's basically here. And as you can see here, it says MM with gamepad, move mouse with gamepad. See the logic I use is so simple. And so basically this is just a custom event. You know, the one you get, if you don't know, this is how you know, by typing in add custom, and you'll see it there, add custom event. Click this, and ta-da, you get this, and you can name that whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? That's why I love this. That's what I love about being in these blueprints is that, you know, like anything, you can do this in C++ as well, but it's the use of both of them together. I'm trying to do, the majority of my project in blueprint but i do have things that i want to only do in c plus plus that'll come later on um but right now everything's working pretty good like it is um, but i could definitely get my frames up a little higher by uh implementing some c plus plus but we'll talk about that another time so anyway we'll get rid of this booyah that's gone so anyway the way we do this here we're going to go ahead and open this one up now and there is no event tick i see you see i typed it here it's not even coming up on a list because there is not one this blueprint is much more efficient as well all of those events now have names so you see here the dynamic crosshair 
um, near wall check like all of these now have their own names so that they are on a timer and so basically by taking these here and removing those ticks I can control how often this is being called upon or being looked at or being checked you see what I mean so now what we have to do is go over here because what changes about everything is that down here now you see this long green row these are my timers with green it means go start let's go and if we go over here and look we see the mm with gamepad now the thing about this is you want this to be exactly the same this is character specific so if you got a space here but not one here you, man i'm telling you so um I usually put a space between everything when I'm doing these and there's certain times when I don't and you will see that in my blueprints I'm trying to get more I'm trying to create scenarios like here see this says water ripples and how this one doesn't have a space so I could easily fix this but I have to do it in both places I would have to do it here and then I would have to go to where the water ripples is which is over here let's back up because this thing is huge and I will have to change it here as well okay so you want to make sure that it's exactly the same okay now the way you get this node if you're not familiar is by um, doing your right click and putting typing in exactly what it says set timer okay and this one that we're using is by function name, but you can see there's other, uh, there's another set timer by event. So there's different ways to do it. Um, this is the one I like to use. This one works fine for me. So this is the one I like to use. Um, so what happens here is you don't need to worry about this or this return value unless you're using it in a different way. The way I'm using it, I don't need to worry about those. And I don't really need to worry about the start delays or anything. Um, this is something that you can do to fine tune things though. Like if you don't need this, you know you're not gonna need this to start until a certain time. You can delay that start. Um, you can do some variances. If you want something a little random to be going on and you don't want that same feel every time the person experiences it, you can put a little delay to these functions or whatever. So that's what that is. Looping is self-explanatory. Um, you want this to loop because it's a timer that you want you're removing a tick so that you can replace it with a looping timer and the timer can be controlled to where this is just executing in seconds instead of every frame so in order for this to be every frame i think it's like 0 0.01 so if you make this 0 0.01 you might as well not do this because that's pretty much every frame but it's still not going to be as smooth as the event tick doing it every frame so in that scenario if you need something to run that smooth that's when you use a tick and 99 percent of the time you don't need it that smooth there's very very certain cases where you actually need the tick and in order to make the smoothness be the way you want it to be okay especially if you're not going to use any c plus plus you're going to have to use the tick at that at that moment for sure so um in c plus plus you can set off event ticks it's the same scenario guys these they can do a, pretty much the same stuff in both sides it's just one of them is more efficient at certain things than the other one is in the eyes of certain people and in the eyes of programming it just some things are more efficiently done in blueprint some are more efficiently done in C++. Um, so anyway, what I do is now, as you can see, I have a variance in times. So now if you look here, straight variance, 0 0.2 here, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 1. Here's a 0 0.01, but when I put it this on 0 0.01, this is supposed to be equivalent to the tick but it still seems like it's not as heavy when I do it this way so and this is something that probably wasn't as super heavy but why not just have it here where I have more control over it on um, the water ripples as you see here I move them down but they're still above tick speed but they look really good 
you know so this is basically what I mean like this is these are the events that you know I need to check every now and then and some of these I can probably change them to not be point one I could probably move like this one's one second um, this is to check when I'm near a wall so boom when I get near a wall boom in one second it's gonna trigger whatever that event is so as you can see there's a lot of timers and that's what I've done here to neaten this down and you don't see all these webs going all across and sideways and stuff anymore they're all in their own little little uh, areas so basically that is what you do guys you just create your custom event um, and I'm gonna just go ahead and show you guys over here I'll just do it in this other blueprint okay so basically the, the way you want to think is how this fires and when this fires that's how you you know decide you know how to set up the timer for that event like this is waves so basically in my new setup we're going to look at this one so let's look at this first everything looks pretty much the same there's a 0.5 second delay okay and then boom this kicks in now let's go look at our other version okay so this is the same blueprint same setup we're going to go over to where the water is so let me go ahead and make this larger because it's already bad enough trying to navigate through this thing without that and you can see I disconnected that so this was costing me some time <clears throat> that I didn't need I need this to happen immediately so this is gone and that's out of the new blueprint so you see I named it water ripples so let's go ahead and I'm just gonna name it the same thing okay so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here we're gonna create a custom event so we're going to go here, let's right click, add custom event, and <clears throat> we're going to call it water, space, ripples, and to be honest with you guys, I have been trying to refrain from using this space, that's how I started doing it. I really prefer to not use it because then if you do a double space or something by accident you may or may not see it so to me it's actually better keeping them together but that's what I mean by that is character specific I run mine you'll often see that I through my blueprints and more recent videos and everything you're gonna see me more often do it this way and this is the way that I'll be doing it just because it's safer for me to know that I didn't put a space there and not too many spaces all right and just have to go having me backtrack for no reason so now at this point the way you can test this is literally by if you're worried about it or anything and you feel like you're not comfortable yet you can literally just put a node here this is what I do to remind myself and especially if you're newer and just put that pull that right to where you were where your connection used to be at so now you know boom from here this goes here you can even do another one if you're really really nervous about it and this is just a reroute node so we could put re route and you'll see add reroute node and just put another one right here so now that'll let you know that you had a connection right here that's broken um, and you can test this now so we can go in the game and see if the water ripples still work so let's compile it this is gonna run really bad if I keep both of these open so I'm gonna go ahead and close the other one because now you get the concept I already showed you guys what I need to show you in the new blueprint so let's go ahead and we're just gonna close that one out and we're just um, gonna save because all I did was delete that um, five second okay and now we're just going to be in this one project okay so that'll keep the confusion down as well so what we've just done let me go back as we've uh, this tick comes off here um, and I should have did the mouse movement first to keep it simple but we're just going to do it this way because I felt this is the way is, is more effective and a more efficient way to do it when you're learning is to start out here with what you have going on in your on your screen off of the sequence because this is the majority of the bulk this I had here 
this is one little thing not even that serious and I don't want to break this link off already because then all this stuff is not going to work you see what I mean so if you're newer you know I don't want you to accidentally do that so do it this way this way just makes a lot more sense and it's going to be a lot easier for you to go behind yourself and fix things and I don't do this stuff anymore like unless I have a really 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 big blueprint now I may just comment and put around the note hey remove if problems if it's something that I made but make notes for yourself man you got to do it um it just helps you man you get tired sometimes you might pass out you need to have them notes there just in case all right so now this is what you want to do you want to go to where your timers are where your event begins play is that because that's usually uh, the best place to place a timer is at the beginning of everything so let's find begin play which on this one is way over here just tucked off in it's got a label around it but still so what we're going to do now is we're going to go drag off of this event begin play and we're going to put set timer by function name you can do it by event as well but this is how I do it here um, and I'm going to explain this to you real quick so basically your function name is going to be the name of your event so let's go grab that real fast and hopefully you don't have to go across the planet like I do to get mine but I do so what you want to do is actually copy it straight from here because like I said if you do type with spaces you're going to know that you got the exact same name. It has to be the exact same name or it's not going to work right. So now let's go here. We can go ahead and paste that here. Control V or right click paste. Now you want to make sure because if it's not working guys, it's going to be two reasons. One, you want to make sure you put a time here. So I put 0 0.05 I believe for the last one and then you want to set this to looping okay now there are some other things here initial start delay and um, initial start delay variance you can use that if you want to just add some randomness to when things start or if you don't need some, this timer to start right away in the game like you want you can let other things happen and this can just go on for a while because you're not gonna you know you're not gonna ha need this for at least a minute or so in the game or whatever or you don't need it to keep checking it so often it's not something that is like like detrimental that you have to check it every second you know what I mean so that's how you can you can play around with these nodes this right here um, you can actually right click any of these and promote them to a variable and of course it's choosing the auto save right now <laughs> all right but you can make those into a variable and then name this what you want like you could say water ripple loop because then you can control it using these uh, names here and you can turn these events off if you don't need them for certain times and I've done that in another uh, video that I will uh, have and that I'll show you guys I'll um, put that one up as well well I'll make it because um, I just did it in another blueprint so I'll make a video showing that so anyway we're not gonna um, do the uh, create the loop node because I'm not using it here so I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to control our, Z our way out. We just want to set it to looping because I want this to always loop. Okay, we're going to compile that now. So now we have our node here and you don't have to connect anything to object. Um, and you don't need to run anything off of this return unless you're, you need to get something from this timer to use for you know another part of your event. So basically this is all you need to do is what's right here. Okay. So make sure you make sure you have a time and make sure it's looping because if you don't, man, you're going to be sitting there wondering, scratching your head, why, and going back and looking and looking and looking. And if it's only the first one or two you've done, you're going to get caught slipping. So you can see I already had some that I did here too for the XP. And um, I, um, so all of these things are going to save me from having to call the events over here. So now let's go and test it in the game again we're just gonna play from here and man I'm telling you that water it just seems like that's wrong 
I'm, I'm sitting here fighting that during the game when I'm supposed to be trying to show you guys. And stuff bothers me so quick, guys, when it comes to, you know, I just want you guys to have the uh, best visual possible here. So we're going to go ahead and play it now. Let's go in and see. So now, yeah, around our character now, you can see the waves. Yeah, way different. Okay. And this water and stuff down here is just not that at all. But now, yeah, you can see waves around, not just the drones wave, but now you can actually see our waves coming off of our character. So they're very faint, but um, you can see them. So now we know that this one is good. We can go ahead and we can just delete this completely out of here. So what I'm going to do is just highlight these nodes, press delete, and we got one down, six to go. So I'm going to just do a couple more quick ones just so you guys can get the concept down again. So, uh, and remember this guys, you can always use copy and paste, okay? But I'm gonna <clears throat> do the do it just raw again. So we're gonna go ahead and do add custom event. So let's go ahead and do add custom. Event, and you could type add event and get it faster, I'm pretty sure. Um, and this one we're going to call what it says here, dynamic crosshair. So it's already got a name. I'm just going to copy this to the event. So let's edit. Let's copy. Let's go here. Let's paste it. And it's going to tell you that it already has a name. So all you do is just change it up some type of way. So um, I'm just going to put dynam crosshair same thing to me it means the same thing so there we go dynam crosshair and we're just gonna put that there okay and you see they're both connected if you're uncomfortable remember what I showed you at the other on the other one what to do but if you're uh, fine with it then you don't got to do that literally all you know it's coming off of one of these so I'm just gonna break the node link here boom so now we got the dynamic crosshair. So now what we want to do is you want to go down here. And like I said, you could copy this, just copy one of these other nodes and just do it. But we're just going to do it one more time. Then I'll show you the last one. I will just copy it. So set timer by function name. Okay. And, um, we're going to go ahead and you see these are this is the only part that's important so that's why i mean for it to actually work this stuff you have to deal with or you have to manipulate okay so i'm just going to go ahead and we're going to take this end here and we're just going to move it to that end and then connect these together okay and then again you got to think what is this function doing how fast do i need this to keep on ticking okay so the next one that we're doing is the dynamic crosshair that has to be pretty fast so we're going to put that at 0.01 that's something that boom when you move it needs to move right away and it needs to do it smoothly you don't want it being you know jerky or bouncy so we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy this control c okay and we're going to go down here to where we made our timer which at least yours should be closer than mine, I'm hoping. And we're gonna just paste that name in this little box here, Control V. All right, we're gonna set that time to 0 0.01 for this one, because that's how fast I need it to be, and we're gonna make sure that's looping. Okay, so that's for the crosshair. Okay. So now, um, we're gonna do one more. All right. And I know they work because I've already done them before. But we're going to do one more here. And um, let me get down to the tick. That's something completely different. So we'll do this one here for near wall check. And we're just going to copy this one. So I'm going to move this down like this. Near wall check. Okay. So there we go, we got near wall check, and it'll let you do it that way as well. So if you want to name it the same thing, you can do one without spaces, one with spaces. 
Okay, boom, we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna disconnect from this pin and take that off. So now if you see here, we got near wall check. Now I'm gonna show you the copy method where you just basically copy the other one. So that this takes a lot less time. You can literally just control W, okay. Control, grab, drop it over here. Put these two together. Now we just go grab our name. Now the thing is when you copy it, you can't just try to copy this name and then go paste it. It's gonna paste a whole bunch of script in there that you're gonna be like, what in the heck is this? So make sure after you paste, you come here and then you take the name. Okay, and then you copy it. And then let me travel back across the globe here. And then you could just, when you click it once, you can just control V and it'll just paste it over it. Press enter and you're in the game. Okay. So that's all you guys got to do, man. Um, and like I said, if you have events that follow one another or something like that, you have to go in and organize those events. Um, sometimes you may have an event firing behind another event. If you do have this happening, look at it, see if it's something you can break up. If you can break it up and rather than have a tick with those functions happening on it with those events, I should say happening on it, then go ahead, man, and make it into some events, break it up and make it into events. It'll make everything make more sense to you as well, because you can just read and see that this is what that does. This is what this does. So basically what is happening here, just to let me run it down for you now that we ran over a couple of examples of how to do it is what it's doing. So when you, when this fires off, it says, Hey, event begin play. It's when your character is spawned or whatever happens when, when, the, when, whenever your character is needed in the game, this is going to be fired off. So boom, event begin play. What are you doing? Set the timer by function name. What function? Um, water ripples. Okay, so you want me to set a timer by the function name water ripples. Yep, how fast do you want it? I want it to be 0 0.05 seconds. And do you want that looping or do you want me to just fire this once? I just want you to fire this every 0 0.05 seconds. So let's just loop it. Okay, so that's pretty much the philosophy. That's what's happening here. And now, once it says that, it's saying, okay, boom, this function named water ripples, which is down here, that needed to be ticked a minute ago. And let's go ahead and I'm just going to name this. And we're just going to call this water ripples. Okay, and so now it's gonna come down here and it's gonna fire this event off and it's gonna do what it's supposed to do. And it's gonna check to do it every 0 0.05 seconds. So if I'm hitting that water every 0 0.05 seconds, it's gonna check those waves. It's gonna hit pop those waves off. So it's gonna make sure that those waves are popping off at a fast enough rate to where it looks good and it looks closer to being natural than not okay so nothing is perfect but you know we want to just get it the way we want it and i just want it to be a certain level of quality and to achieve that you can do that with these timers and setting them a certain way so that's pretty much the gist of it guys um, just go through your project if you see that you've done some things and you learned like i did to use this tick to fire off you know your events this is a way to put it into the tick. Um, it, like I said, it gave me like 20 frames by just removing the the uh, culprit right here. I knew this was the culprit for a long time, but like I said, I hadn't gotten involved enough in um, event the event graph as far as in my mind. I didn't think I was prepared or to understand it, but it's so damn simple. <laughs> I wish sometimes people would just explain it like it's so damn simple because it is man you literally all you're doing is saying hey boom this is all this stuff here is an event this has just been closed up guys but basically this was an event before telling this to do whatever it was doing for the crosshair okay they folded it up into here you know so we put it into here we balled it up into here 
and now this is the input for that and this is just firing off that series of events that is inside of here just like we got some that may not be inside of a node like the one that we did up here where it's firing it right here because I could literally do the same thing here I could take all of this and I'll show you guys this so you guys can understand how this stuff works and you can say collapse nodes and there you go and now you can name this whatever you want because no one taught me this either I had no idea how to do this I just all of a sudden figured it out by myself by just messing around one day because it's the simple stuff like this that makes it look so nice and neat that people don't teach you and then you can just name this water ripples and wait a minute it didn't because I think I already named it exactly the same way as the other one so we want to put a space because the other one doesn't have a space so there we go and now we could take this put this in here and then this we can actually shrink it all the way down and I should have the auto snap but that has not been working so I had to actually turn that off because it was actually just causing a lot of problems when I was using it so I stopped using it I'm not going to use it until they fix whatever's going on with it but anyway guys this is it so now that's how you do it that's how you neaten up that blueprint and um, you can tidy up everything and get rid of the nuisance of the tick the unnecessary tick I should say the tick itself is a wonderful thing but easily abused easily abused guys that's it for me man amp capo black adonis games man i thank y'all for stopping by thank all my subscribers that i do have people that are keeping up with me i'm gonna try to keep these videos coming more frequent man y'all be easy i'm out